there lord lord once again we have gathered in this place to worship you to fellowship with you father to be in your presence to hear your voice father lord and to give our life surrendering to you father this evening lord you have brought us to this place and we thank you for that grace and mercy upon our lives father lord we thank you that you are always with us jesus this evening lord we are rejoicing in your presence we have come lord to seek your lord to praise you father lord to worship you in the spirit and in truth father the singing lord we surrender our lives to you father lord we pray that you will speak to each and every one of us tonight lord i pray lord that you will open our eyes you will open our ears lord you will show the way to heaven father and we pray lord that we will surrender our lives to you father we seek you in the name of jesus father we thank you and we give you glory and honor Hallelujah. Let's all rise to our feet. We're just going to worship the Lord. Praise His name. As we praise His name, it is not about the song, it is not about the music, it is not about what we sing, but it is you who will open your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are we ready tonight? And let's believe that the Lord is going to touch us tonight. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Let's praise His name. Sing, get, give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah.
You know, what I was... Uh, every time I ask the Lord before the Wednesday comes, give me a message, what should I preach? And this time the Lord said, share your testimonies. So I did not know that there are going to be so many testimonies in this meeting today, but the Lord knew. So I have shared my testimony before, but maybe there are a few who don't, who have not listened to it. Uh, it may be on video before, but if I make some mistakes regarding the amount of the money and the dates, please forgive me because once I was young and now I am old. <laughs> right. Uh, but anyway, this is for the goodness and the gratefulness of our God, His faithfulness. He will never ever let His children down. We mess up, we go away from Him, but He patiently waits for us and sometimes He gives a hard knock and brings you back because He is our Father. Well, I was uh, a businessman. Uh, I'm talking about the year 1997. I was also doing ministry in church. But then, you know, Sometimes when the blessings come, God goes out, right? That's very, very common and that's what happened to me. The Lord blessed me. I'm not going to go into details, all the blessings, but the Lord blessed me immensely. But gradually I kind of backslid and I hated the word pastors. Right, and I stopped going to church, and you know the Lord gave me a big knock. So I had a house uh, in Maboli, a house with two bare lands on either side, and I had three or four vehicles, and I lost my business all in one day. My business crashed in one day. I had to sell everything. But my house was mortgaged to the bank. So I couldn't repay the loans. Now I'm in a fix. So as usual, I came back to the Lord. But you know, the beautiful thing of the Lord is sometimes you can see that in daily life also, He'll forgive your sin, He'll accept you as your son, but you have to pay the consequences. Till you, you know, till you come to the place that he has marked for you, the problems will be there. So, for me it was 10 long years. I suffered for 10 years. Okay? So, you don't talk to me about suffering. I know what suffering is. So, I had this house which was mortgaged to the bank. So, the bank started writing letters to me. And, uh, you know, those days, they had no emails and all as such. Uh, so every time the postman's bell rings, my heart races because there is a stupid letter from a bank. And the bank, you know, those guys know how to uh, write threatening letters. That is why I have a hatred in, in my heart towards bankers even now. <laughs> <laughs> letters after letters come, so I started talking to them, nothing worked out, all that, blah, blah, blah went on for so many years like this. Ultimately, <clears throat> now I have got back to God and I have started doing ministry also. Right? I have started doing ministry also. So I am going on missions and I am preaching in various churches and all. And I thank God for a man like Pastor Colton who was there with me to advise me and pray for me. Yeah, he knew what it is and some of the things that, the wise things that he told me, you know, I'll never forget in my life. And so going on like this, the bank started threatening me that they will mortgage the house. Uh, sorry, they will uh, uh, sell the house on auction. So I did everything, spoke to this one, that one. Nothing happened. So I got a long story short. They fixed the date for the auction of my house. I believe it was 
October 22nd, the year 2002. You see, I told you now once I was young, now I am old. I have noted in my notes 2000, right? So it's actually it was October 22, the year 2002. October 21st was a Sunday and I went to church and I'm driving back and my heart I was crying, crying out to the Lord. Monday morning, tomorrow morning, bank is going to come to auction. Uh, DW Kirats. <laughs> the guys are going to come to auction, what am I going to do? I was crying out to the Lord, then I heard a voice in my heart. I heard a voice in my heart. Don't worry, your house will not be sold in auction. So that gave me strength, right? And I went home and Monday morning came and uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Now before that, they had advertised in the papers that my house is going to be auctioned. They are given the address and you know, those days when we have crusades, they put up banners and give hand gifts about the meeting like that. They put up banners all over in Vattala area and gave out hand gifts to people saying that this house is going to be auctioned on the 22nd of October 2002. Right? So, uh, Monday morning came, the auctioners came, they waited there for some time, the bank guys also came. Uh, not a dog came for the auction. <laughs> Usually there are stray dogs on the road, that day those dogs were not there. So I served Coca-Cola to all these guys and sent them out. <laughs> so what they told me was when they went, they said uh, the usual practice is the bank buys the house over for some 2,000 odd rupees, right? And we have to hand it over in vacant possession. So that's what happened to me. So they wrote some document that they are purchasing it for 2,000 rupees. I never got the 2,000 also. <laughs> and uh, after about a month or two, uh, they sent me a letter saying that now you have to give the house back in vacant possession, right? And uh, I was trying to sell the house actually, but I couldn't. I couldn't get a buyer and uh, tried so many things. In the, in the meantime, there was a relation of ours. Uh, he's a PC, a President's Council. He also got involved. He knows the chairman down in the bank. He also spoke to them three or four times, but they wouldn't uh, have any concession. They said, you need to pay the money, uh, three and a half million, or hand over the house in vacant possession. Where do I have three and a half million? I didn't have three thousand five hundred rupees at that time, <laughs> right? And so going on like this, then suddenly one day I received summons from courts because the bank has filed action in courts to evict us from the house. I mean, you can. I'm just telling you a story now, but you can just imagine what we went through, right, during that period of time. How much struggle, how much prayer, how much tears, how much faith, right? And uh, that day, I was going to Puttalam to preach in a mission station that Sunday. But a friend of mine who took me, drove me in his van, told me we'll go on Saturday so that we can rest in a guest house and Sunday morning we can do the preaching and come back. I said, fine. But that Saturday morning, I got summons, right? Saturday they were leaving for this mission trip. That morning I got the summons that they have filed action and that I got to go to coach. So I went, I knelt down by my bedside, I kept the, uh, the, the summons and I said, Lord, I'm sure you can read English. Please read this, <laughs> right? Believe me, that's how I prayed and I, got up, my heart was broken, I'm crying, crying inside. The guy who took me, he did not, did not know anything. So I was crying out to the Lord, Lord, you know the best part is this, I go for meetings and people come and tell me, Pastor, please pray for me, I have financial difficulties. I lay hands and pray for them. 
the following week they come and testify pastor prayed and god did a miracle but that god is not doing a miracle for me <laughs> right so i said tell all this and pray to god so you know this and then all the way to puttalam i was crying 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 in my heart right lord do something what am i going to do and you know the lawyers another group of people whom i hate they are liars and uh, because i had to find lawyers now to fight this case so i went to puttalam saturday evening we relaxed in the guest house and i am crying i prayed the whole night sunday morning my friend got up and said about 6 o'clock in the morning he got up and said uh, i want to have a cup of tea the kitchen is still closed shall we go to the town and come have a cup of tea and come i said fine and we got up didn't have wash even got into his van went to puttalam town had a cup of tea and we came back to the guest house as we were coming in uh, there was a garden type of thing and there was a what do you call a swing i told my friend you go up and get ready i will pray a little and come and i was on the swing swinging myself and pray crying out to the lord suddenly the holy spirit came and stood in front of me and he said who is the father of faith i said abraham he said do you know the faith of his son isaac i said i don't know go and take the bible and read i ran to the room took my bible out genesis 22 is the story of isaac's faith i read it and the message that i got there was god tells abraham you know it, it it starts beautifully it says sometime later god tested abraham if you want to walk with god you have to be tested amen many of us don't like tests unless you pass a test you cannot go to the next grade no school will promote you sometime later god tested abraham right god said take your son your only son whom you love isaac and go to the region of moriah sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain i will show you so i'm not going to read the whole bible story of this you can read it it's found in genesis 22 what's happening here is god tells abraham take your son your only son isaac and go up to a mountain that i will show you and sacrifice your son all right so then the following day morning abraham gets up and he didn't consult his wife or anybody in the house he takes his son isaac puts a load of firewood on his back and he takes a knife and he takes a fire and he's going up on this mountain right he's walking on this mountain that god had showed him and on that mountain only he has to do this sacrifice so as they are walking up the mountain abraham has a knife in one hand fire in his one hand isaac has a firewood on his back isaac turns to abraham and says father the wood is here the knife is here the fire is here where is the sacrifice right but this is where the lord spoke to me when i said sir where is the sacrifice abraham turns round and tells him the lord himself will provide right the lord himself will provide abraham gave only one answer and i said grab those words into his spirit what are the words the lord himself will provide after that isaac never questioned abraham because in isaac's heart he had the firm faith that the lord will provide now they walk up to the top of the mountain abraham builds an altar abraham gets isaac binds him hands and feet places him on the altar 
Isaac never fought against Abraham. Neither did he struggle to escape from that altar. In his heart was one verse that was ringing. The Lord himself will provide. When I read this that day, the Holy Spirit took this verse. The Lord himself will provide. Put it deep into my spirit. Kind of embedded into my spirit. I know some people will say this story depicts the coming of Jesus Christ. He was the sacrifice. True. But God took these few verses and gave it to me so that I could believe for a miracle from God. Whatever said in is God's word. Right? The Lord Himself will provide. So I took those words into my spirit, applied to my situation, because only now the Lord, only the Lord can provide for me. Right? So even as I got these words into my spirit, my attitude changed, hope came into my heart, my faith rose up, and I finished my ministry in Puttala and I came back and I came back and then you know I had to get a lawyer and now to cut a long story short the case is going on you now the lawyers also like to drag cases because the more they drag the more money they make alright so now they are dragging it every time you go and you just come back Take a date and come back. Finally, now everybody I'm saying, you know, in my spirit, I'm saying the Lord will provide, the Lord will provide, but nothing is happening to me. No miracle, nothing. Right? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Finally, one day my lawyer said, Mr. Daniels, I can't drag the case anymore. You have to either pay that money three and a half million or you have to hand over the house in vacant position. I told him, the Lord will provide. He said, usually, when people come to a situation like this, they lose their head and this is how they speak. Right? So everybody, I was saying, the Lord himself will provide. I remember one day, I was seated in my office and I was telling myself, the Lord himself will Provide. The Lord Himself will provide. My telephone rang. Alright. I answered the phone. There was this man whom I said a relation of mine, of ours. I said he knows everyone from the bank. You know what he told me? I just today spoke to one of the directors and they said, okay, I will we will bring it down to two and a half million. Can you pay two and a half million? I said, we had to go for two and a half million. I said, ask for some time. All right. And then he said, okay, I'll talk to them and see. And he kept the line. After that, the following day, again, he called me. And he said, again, I spoke to them this morning. And they said, they can bring it down to 2.2 million. What do you say? I said the same thing. Ask for some time. He said, no, no. I will call you back at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I will tell you what to do. Don't go anywhere, he said. I said, okay, fine. And I waited. He called me in a little while. And he said, come to the union place, to a particular bank at that time, and meet me there. So I thought in my mind, he has negotiated something with the bank, right? And he has got a new deal where he has rescheduled the loan, where I could pay something monthly and sort it out, that kind of stuff. I thought, I came and I met him. And you know what happened? 
He gave me a 2.2 million pay order check to my hands and said, I have spoken and arranged everything. Take your deeds, your documents, everything and go home. I grabbed it from his hands. Suppose he gets a heart attack and dies. I grabbed the pay order check, 2.2 million. He never asked me, when are you going to give back and all that. I went to the bank, paid it, took my documents. I went home. Guess what? The Lord did provide. Amen. What I want to tell you is, there is no problem that God cannot solve. There is no miracle that God cannot do. There is no issue that God cannot do it. Nothing is impossible with God. You got to put your hope and your trust in God. Tell me whether your uncle or auntie will give you 2.2 million by then. No interest. Don't know when I'm going to pay. I paid it back after two years actually. Right? That's our God. A miracle working God. I want you to know something. You know in that story, Abraham and Isaac are walking on one side of the mountain and going to the top. And this conversation takes place. When they go to the top, when Abraham had laid his son and when he took his knife out to cut his throat, the angel of the Lord spoke from heaven and said, Abraham, don't touch your son. Don't kill him. And Abraham turned around and saw in the thickets, there was a ram that had got caught. Abraham released his son, took that ram and sacrificed it on that mountain. My question to you is this. From where did the ram come there to the top of the mountain? While Abraham and Isaac were walking on one side of the mountain, God's miraculous provision was walking up the other side of the mountain. Amen. Same way in your life, you're waiting for a miracle. Remember, you're walking on one side of the mountain, your miracle is walking up the other side of the mountain. You've got to come to the top of the mountain in faith to see your miracle. Amen. In every one of our lives, God will test us. God will wait for the opportune time, His time, and God will work the miracle out. Now that miracle in my life gave me such tremendous strength because otherwise, you know, only I know the chaos that I went through in life. That miracle that God did, I still go on that strength because I know that God will never fail me. If He did it once, He will do it again and again. Amen. He is our God. So what I want to tell you this evening is, never give up. Never doubt God. Never take your foot back. Sometimes the Lord will delay. Most of the time He delays. Because He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to exercise our faith. He wants us to come to that place where, right, where He knows that we have come to that place and, and we are worthy to receive that miracle. So just because there is a delay, don't think that God has forgotten you or God is not answering your prayers. You know, I want to tell you something. 2007, I said I suffered for 10 years. 1997 to 2007, none of you know this. 2007, God gave me a vision 
to start a ministry at Hotel Sapphire. Now, 17 years, this is the 17th year, the ministry is still going on. I'm glad I went through that for 10 years. God prepared me for 10 years to give me a ministry like that. It's not easy to do a ministry like that in a hotel for 17 long years. As long as God wants us to do that ministry, we will do it. Because when I get to heaven, I know how many non-Christians have come to know the Lord. Especially during the war times, our altars were full. Mothers, sisters, fathers used to come and cry there. Right? Prince is there, Prince knows. Tiron is also there, Tiron also knows. The, mir the, the, the ministry that we did and we are still doing. And the most beautiful thing is every meeting there are new people coming in. We don't give even hand views now. Only SMS messages, WhatsApp and that's it. Even yesterday we had the meeting, there were three new people. You know what? Unless there is a sacrifice, there is no crown. Unless you are prepared to pay the price, you will not see the glory of God. But let me tell you one thing. One thing that God hates, one thing that God hates is deliberate sin. If you have deliberate sin in your life, God will whack you. God will punish you until you repent and you turn around because he is a holy God. Not only because he is a holy God, we have an accuser of brethren. The devil will come and tell God, oh, you are saying that's your servant, that's your son, see what he is doing. This is his sin. God's hands get tied. Because God cannot violate his word. He is holy, his word is holy. Therefore, I am telling you, if we have sin in our lives, we need to repent. We need to fight against the, the besetting sins. Some of us have weaknesses which has come upon our lives from childhood. We need to fight against it. And how do we fight? We fight with the help of the Holy Spirit of God. And I'll tell you, God is a marvelous, you know, what shall I say? His forgiving ability is limitless. He'll forgive sins. But He wants you to walk in righteousness. He wants you to be holy even as He is holy. It's not our righteousness, it's not our holiness, but the righteousness of Jesus and the holiness of Jesus. So miracles I have, I'll tell you in my life, like you said, I live in by faith now, right? I have seen miracles. One thing I'll tell you something. People come and make promises to me, right? As a preacher of the word, a lot of people come and make a lot of promises. But their promises are like water being poured out. Blank, no depth, no foundation. But God has used people in my life whom I have least expected to do a miracle for me. That is God. Right? I know what it is to go through the mill. I know what it is to be, you know, talanafine. I know what it is to stand in faith. Today I'll tell you, God still tests me sometimes. That's his nature. Right? Every time he wants to lift you up, he will test you. But I know one thing. He is able. He is able to see me through, through any situation. I want to encourage every one of you, you may be fighting a battle, you may be going through some difficulties. Have faith in God. You know, this 
Bible must become your food because okay supposing let's say Tyrone is a prophet right I hope he won't be like some of our prophets let's say he comes and gives me a promise right a prophecy a promise if I got go to God and say father Tyrone told me this I have a little bit of doubt now whether Tyrone was genuine or not but when I go to God and say Lord your word says this I know this 110 percent it is true and God has to honor his word okay that is why he has given us this word so don't run after prophecies fellows will tell you what is in their mind right go to the word of God say Holy Spirit speak to me he is the one who wrote it and he will speak to you he will give you a promise that 10 years I lived by this word there was a time I used to have a CR book and I used to just copy the Bible on the CR book I have done it because I became hungry for the word I knew you know I am telling you very frankly there was another pastor who used to give out messages like this he came and told me don't sell the house the Lord will give you the money if the Lord is speaking to me, he has to speak to me also, no? Right? In my heart, God is telling, no. You have an obligation to the bank. You can't blame the bank. You borrow the money. You pay the money. So I have to find the first opportunity of settling the bank. That is my responsibility. Right? So I started praying, Lord, my responsibility is to settle this road to the bank. The bank is not wrong for what they are doing. They are doing the right thing. It's their money that I have taken. Right? Don't point your finger at the bank. So I said, it's my responsibility. Therefore, let me sell it and give. But the Lord had another way of dealing with this. He provided this money did the miracle after two years I sold the house and gave the money back to that guy and with the balance money I bought another house Amen so what I want you to know is God is able to do a miracle when the situation is so you know unbelievable so bad just trust him just hang on to him feed on his word this word is the infallible word of God Jesus said my words are life and spirit if you learn to study the word if you learn to take you know the, the juice from the word the nourishment that is in this word God will do amazing things in your life. I want every one of you to pray this prayer. Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I may know you. The spirit of wisdom and revelation comes from the word of God. Never, never shun the word of God. Never feel lazy to read the word of God. This is spiritual food. We live by this spiritual food. So I hope I have encouraged you with my testimony. I was encouraged by the testimonies that I heard from you all. Right? And God will continue to do miracles in our lives all right shall we all rise to our feet and shall we all uh, worship the lord and after that we will pray
Shall we sing that song, Give Thanks to the Lord? We sang it once, we sing it again.
for themselves and their friends and family, Lord. You know every need, Lord. And there is nothing that is impossible in you. I pray that you stretch forth your mighty hand right now and perform miracles in their lives. Lord, whether it be your financial problem, solve that financial problem. Whether it be a sickness, heal that sickness. Lord, whether it be a pain in the body, remove that pain. Whether, whether it's a family or a marriage problem, solve those problems. We come to you believing, we come to you in faith, and we pray in the name of Jesus that miracles will happen in you. I take authority on every situation. Yes. I curse and bind the bones of darkness. I rebuke this demonic thing. Get out of my people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the blood of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Whom the Son sets free. Shall be free indeed your word says. Lord we thank you. For answering all our prayers. We bring glory, honor, and praise to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.